Hello everybody and welcome back to KXP. In the last episode, we sent a bunch of Kerbals to the surface of Minmus in a science rover and uh, we didn't really give them any kind of way to come back. So in today's episode, we're going to design a craft that when they are done with their mission, they'll be able to utilize to head home. There's no real missions that we can use to uh, bolster this, so let's just go ahead and jump into the VAB and start building. We're going to use the Alcor pod as the main focus of the lander. Uh, I really like it for its advanced IVA, uh, really easy technology to use. We are, however, not going to be using it as a re-entry vehicle as we have in previous series and uh, episodes on this channel. And uh, instead, we're going to do another Apollo-style docking and landing and rendezvous kind of mission, which is why we've put the docking port senior on, uh, on top of the craft. Uh, we have a reaction wheel and a, a probe core, so that way we can utilize uh, the probe core, so we can utilize remote tech. And I was going to kind of uh, clip the parts in to kind of keep a low profile, but I ended up deciding not to. I don't like part clipping if I can help it. So now we have uh, some uh, radial decouplers and some large fuel tanks. We're going to put some terrier engines on there and then run a fuel duct, excuse me, fuel duct uh, between all the engines to do a little onion staging. Uh, we're going to throw some landing legs on here because we'll still have those, those side tanks when we go to land. And so this will make a nice wide base to keep it from tipping over. This is a, a design I've used countless times before in my series. In fact, this is pretty much my standard uh, lander, Mun lander, Minmus lander. Uh, we haven't landed on Duna uh, except for the one time and with that it was uh, something completely different than this. But this is typically what I would use in a no atmosphere kind of situation. And so uh, if you're familiar with uh, my channel, and my Kerbal series, this will probably look pretty familiar to you, with the exception of these RCS thrusters that I have practically never used on my channel. I didn't do a lot of RCS uh, control. However, uh, since we are going to be docking this, it is important to have some kind of control on that. So, anyways, we are moving on now to the service module. This is going to be the thing that takes us to Minmus gets us in a parking orbit, and uh, then once rendezvoused with, will bring us back home to Kerbin and uh, safely onto the surface. So we're building this in reverse because we're just attaching it on top of the docking port of the landing module, but we're going to use the Mach 3 cabin with uh, the same docking port on the front of it. We're going to use some radial decouplers for that as well. Or, uh, excuse me, radial parachutes. Not a couple of this. So we got some drug shoots and then some shoots from the real shoots mod. And we're going to plot those in there. And we're going to just kind of, uh, we're going to adjust our staging. And then we're just going to do a, a simulation of this, uh, kind of setup. We already know that the lander can handle landing on Minmus, returning back to orbit. We could actually get ourselves all the way home with this, but like I mentioned before, we're not gonna use the Alcor pod because uh, it's really not rated for re-entry. We do have access to the inflatable heat shield, which will make it possible, but I, I've been enjoying doing this Apollo-style landing. So now we're throwing on some uh, solar panels uh, so that way we can keep electricity throughout the whole journey but the extra large panels are uh, well a little uh, extra large so we're going to throw on this octagonal um, structural piece and attach them there which will give them the clearance to pass the, uh, the side tanks however I just didn't like 
the way that it was set up. So we're going to put the extra large on the side tanks themselves and we're going to utilize uh, some smaller uh, solar panels for the landing module. We are also going to add some explosives from the tank explosive mod, something we use pretty commonly. And this will discard those stages once we, uh, well, discard those stages. So let's go ahead and get stuff on action groups. I want to make sure that I have uh, con uh, control of parts that I may not have control of uh, inside. And I like to keep the right clicking and menu selection to a minimum, so action groups are great. Now it's time to load the whole thing up into a fairing. And at first we kind of connect it at this bottom bit. But uh, I remember that I should probably auto strut this if I'm going to be putting it into a fairing. I don't want it to be jostling around inside. So we are going to auto strut the whole thing from top to bottom. And you don't need to auto strut every single piece, but a lot of the things that could be more structural. It's a good idea too. Now I decided to lift the fairing up a little higher. Um, I did ultimately like this design the best, but we will end up changing it later. Uh, we did a quick, uh, we did a quick test flight, but we're not going to include it into the extended cut because all it was is we realized we wanted to have a little more space to bring a few more kerbals back uh, in case we need to, because we are going to. Like I've mentioned before, be doing a lot of stuff on Minus uh, here in these next few episodes. Throwing uh, communication on there because uh, our initial plan is to pilot it uh, via the probe core and send it down all on autopilot. Well, not autopilot, but uh, probe control. All right, so that uh, service module performed a good enough docking. Uh, as well as the inclination change and transfer burn. We didn't do the whole mission there, but I feel just a little bit extra fuel wouldn't hurt, so we're going to throw that on there as well. Uh, change our fairing around, and eventually I had to forgo keeping the capsule uh, exposed and just go for this pointy tip. But it was a, it was a pretty great test. Uh, everything worked according to plan. Our docking was pretty easy and seamless, so it is time to build the launch vehicle, as you've already been watching. Uh, I go through a couple different iterations on this to try to find the best thing. I need to make sure that I have a large enough th thrust to weight ratio that we don't spend too much time in the atmosphere, because I, I just want to kind of brute force this. Uh, excuse me, brute force this uh, launch, and that's because uh, we have. We're using the strategy mod, uh, as you may be familiar with, and we had the large uh, massive scale launch vehicles uh, program activated. So if we can get this, uh, the majority of this launch vehicle up into orbit, then uh, we'll be making some money. I did do a test flight and quickly realized I needed to auto strut the bottom of it. So let's uh, go ahead and do that. And I do another test flight and realize that I should add a few struts between these two parts of the rocket. And uh, yeah, I think we're getting pretty close to the final design. Plus test. Note to self, Separatrons, quite a good thing. Never forget Separatrons on your boosters, especially when they're super large like this. Alright, so this launch vehicle is just not going to cut it. It, uh sold out at 1.0 thrust to weight ratio when we separated the side boosters so that's just you know it's just not worth it enough it ran out of fuel before we could get a full orbit out of it so i think just bigger is better here uh, rather than more boosters just bigger ones so let's get a larger tank on here let's get an engine plate uh, from the making history dlc uh, throw on four different uh, or four of uh, the main sails uh, and then balance it out. We are going to add one more little bit of fuel tank right there uh, to connect it make a nice Solid aerodynamic space. And this is a pretty good looking rocket uh, We have a pretty decent thrust to weight ratio, but we are going to want uh, a little more 
I'm going to use this uh, pre-made Atlas mount because uh, I, I think it just looks a little bit better than the engine plate. And uh, lower our gimbal limit on here. I'm going to change out the solar panels just for bigger ones and add more battery so that way uh, it can uh, survive uh, the the dark side of Midmus and still have connection if we need. We're going to throw on these stabilizers. We don't really need it, but I like the idea of not having the whole rocket balance on its uh, engine bells. Let's go do a quick test. Yep, terrible thrust to weight ratio. Uh, I should have noticed I could have looked at the Delta V stats and realized that uh, it would be a slow start. So let's go ahead and throw on some side boosters. I first start off with these, uh, I believe these were the Clydesdale. I kind of moved a little too fast for that, but you could go back and pause it if you wish. We are definitely going to throw some separate trons on there because we learned our lesson earlier on. Uh, and try to find a nice decent nose cone but there wasn't anything that fit the exact size so we're just gonna pick this one that's slightly big and extend the rockets out so uh, the parts don't clip we are going to do a quick test flight only to realize that we are going to need to strut the uh, side boosters to this because they're just way too wobbly all right back to testing So, I don't know if it's a bug or a feature, but Remote Tech is not allowing us to uh, pilot this very well. And so we are going to throw Jebediah in there and he is going to be on the mission. Playing impossible. So just to finish that sentence, uh, Remote Tech made throttling impossible uh, when not having a Kerbal aboard and we forgot to bring Jebediah onto our lander during the test and so uh, we were unable to land test our landing correctly. We also realized that by bringing Jebediah down to the surface we don't have enough seats on this return craft uh, to bring him home as well so we added two uh, command seats in there. We only need one uh, communications dish so we added that to the other side to balance it out. We did however add a bunch of communication dishes onto the lander because if this ends up getting left in space which is most likely how it's going to happen um, we can use it as kind of a makeshift satellite at that point we're going to throw some explosives onto the launch vehicle with some separatrons because the launch vehicle did have enough delta v to get us into orbit uh, in fact just exactly enough delta v to get us into the orbit that we wanted so uh, by having a way to deorbit it, or not deorbit it, but destroy it and get it out of there, uh, will be useful. Useful. I'm gonna add a little bit of extra fuel in there just to give ourselves a little margin of error and make sure that no other kerbals are in the cockpit. Um, this is looking about ready to go, so let's go ahead. We want just a little more thrust to weight uh, off the get-go, and of course, a little more room for uh, room for error but with all that it is ready to go so let's go ahead and focus on our craft on the launch pad stage our rockets lift off that is the kind of thrust to weight ratio that I'm looking for and those extra side boosters really did make a difference on this once again we have seen a launch Orbit, an inclination change, and uh, transfer to this several times more. So we will be cutting ahead to kind of the most important parts of the launch. And that is, uh, includes the breaking through the cloud layer into the atmosphere above. It's always one of my favorite parts. So let's go ahead and separate our side boosters, the separatrons, pull them away from the center booster pretty easily. So uh, always remember your separatrons, people. Let's go ahead and at 50 kilometers, we're going to go ahead and let go of our fairing. We don't have as much atmospheric pressure on our craft, so we can safely get rid of that extra weight. We are now at uh, 122 kilometers above the surface, so we are circularizing with our very powerful 
four mainsail engines. In fact, it was a little too powerful, so we decided to cut them off and uh, reposition ourselves at our Atlantis. Having that extra little fuel tank really mattered. Uh, as you can see, I was wiggling, so it's a little obscure on the screen, but we had exactly enough delta V to bring ourselves to orbit. As you can see there, we only have about seven seconds left of burn in our delta V stats. We made some money, I missed how much, but we made some money for getting such a large craft into orbit. And uh, with this, we're gonna utilize the last of our fuel to do our inclination change. So now comes the important part, one of the first uh, potential, potentially dangerous parts, and that is docking. We have Jebediah Kerman in the service module, we are going to use that to flip around, grab a hold of the landing module, and uh, reposition itself for the transfer burn. Gotta make sure that we are far enough away from the target craft, so that way when we flip around, we don't accidentally knock into it like we did in the last episode. This time we'll be uh, a little safer. So we are pointed towards our target and just slightly burning to cancel out our reverse velocity and now we are approaching. We're going to let the docking forces handle uh, the precision of it. We don't need to waste any of our RCS doing maneuvers just to get ourselves safely in. As long as we don't bump it off course, we'll be good. With that little pause and camera change, we have successfully connected with the, the lower stage, and now we can separate the launch vehicle. But I decided before we do that, let's go ahead and just throw uh, whatever fuel we have left in it. I know it's just barely anything, it's just a drop in the bucket, but let's go ahead and empty it nonetheless. So we're gonna separate our lower stage. The separatrons aren't going to be enough to deorbit, so we're going to use tack explosives to take care of that. And with that, that was a successful maneuver. We are now poised and ready to head to Midmas. Our inclination change had been done, so we are now on the same plane, and we can uh, come in pretty easily, pretty equatorially. Uh, we're going to use Precise Maneuver mod to fine-tune our uh, approach. I'd like to keep it around 30 kilometers, uh, a little bit below if I can. I like to keep a nice low parking orbit. And our engine fires. I like this singular design. This is the Poodle engine, which is typically for engine bells together, but I like the singular design of it. Very, uh, very Apollo. Here we are, we are extending our apoapsis until we meet with where Minmus will be when we arrive. Bringing down our uh, periapsis by hand, and we're, the inclination that we have wasn't great, so we did adjust it uh, mid-course, but we're gonna skip ahead to the actual approach of Minmus, the capture. And once we get into the rendezvous, or excuse me, the undocking in the landing portion we'll be doing a lot less cuts ahead and uh, just focusing on the mission itself so here we are at our periapsis and we're actually just above our our target as we can see right there those that's where we want to land uh, as precisely as possible technically uh, we could land now uh, it would be a lot of wasted fuel and we'd have to move quickly to get Jebediah into the landing module and then get our service module back into orbit and who knows if we'll have that glitch where we can't throttle off. So it's not worth it to try to land in this first go by. We will just get ourselves into orbit and come down intentionally. And two seconds left and with that we have brought ourselves to a 30 kilometer by 30 kilometer uh, orbit. So we transferred uh, Jebediah over into the landing module and now we are undocking 
As you see, we have control of the service module right now, no Jebediah. Now we're in the landing module, and Jebediah is there in the dark because we didn't turn on any of the lights in there in the IVA mode, uh, which will uh, come to haunt us later, but it's okay. It's not that big of a deal. If you're not playing in IVA mode, it's not that big of a deal, but... Anyways, uh, I was thinking about just coming in for a straight land in there, but yeah, it, it, it would be coming in at uh, night time. It would, you know, be coming in without too much preparation. I wouldn't be able to plot a maneuver very well. And as you can see, there are inclination is not great. But we wait a few orbits. Uh, unfortunately, I miscalculated. I thought it was dawn that we were going to be landing in, but instead it actually will be dusk. We get our trajectories mod, which allows us to see precisely where we're going to land, and we plot in a maneuver using remote tech, uh, even though we have no control over the PSC, because we have Jebediah, we have full control, and uh, because remote tech works as long as you have control, we are able to use that to precisely burn, so we can uh, land uh, exactly where we want to. Time warping ahead until we get a lot closer. And this is when I realized, oh, we're going to be landing in the dark. It's a good thing that I put lights on this craft, so we can at least see the ground as it approaches. And if it approaches too quickly, we can, uh, you know, hopefully act. As long as we didn't miss our suicide burn. Let's get our landing gear down. Take one last look at the sun before we have to say goodbye. And we're going to be getting our uh, information up like we did before, our, our altitude and the top, followed by our landing info, uh, and then the nav ball, I figured, will be very helpful to see the direction that the craft is facing. Like uh, being able to see this information, I mean, just even myself, it's, it's very helpful as I'm doing these voiceovers after the fact, because uh, I can actually pay attention to a lot uh, uh, more specific things. As we see here, we uh, suicide burn countdown is now passing 40 seconds, and so we have to make sure that we don't uh, let that go over zero or pass under zero. We have to make sure we can get it right. I'm adjusting my trajectory a little bit, bringing it in a little closer, and then I'm also going to be pointing myself normal to just uh, bring it over to the left a little bit. I want to come as closely to the rover as possible, because the rover is right next to the flag, and uh, it w may come, it may travel around, but it will always come back to that flag. So having the return vehicle as close as possible is always nice. So now we came to 6.8 seconds and uh, I started to freeze up a little bit. I was a little concerned that we were gonna pass our suicide burn, but we came back and uh, we had not, so that made me feel a lot better. But this is uh, primarily because we are coming into physics distance with the objects. There we go, at 0 0.3 seconds we burn, which means that we are going to be cutting it very close. Uh, it's going to be very efficient. This is the best kind of, as efficient as we possibly could, except for going to 0 0.1. But as you see there, we can see the ground. Uh, we killed our velocity a little late, so we're heading back the opposite direction. Flipping around, trying our best to control our descent so we don't flip around or land on our side and thankfully we touch down on all four legs and we have a nice stable base. Jebediah safely aboard Minmus. So now we're going to shut down our engines because there's no need to have that accidentally take off uh, unintentionally. We're going to hop into IVA mode kind of control it a little bit. This is what I mentioned. Uh, it's going to come back to haunt me because I couldn't remember where the lights switch was to turn this on and it would have helped to have just a little bit of daylight when we started but nonetheless we're going to get Jebediah out of his seat using the free IVA mod walk towards the back hatch and exit the craft he is so excited about joining his friends on Minmus that he can't wait till morning he just wants to hop over to the craft and have some uh have some midnight snacks with them before uh before heading off to bed in a an actual bed instead of just the cockpit seat. So there he is, out on EVA, in IVA.
fallen down to the surface, slowly and safely, taking a look at the craft in all of its glory in space on another planet, or another celestial body anyways. It's dark and eerie. We get a little glimpse of uh, Kurgan off in the distance at the top before I ended up turning on my HUD. Uh, we can see some stars. Kind of nice. Uh, we are, however, going to need to find where that rover is because uh, we are not going to be able to see it in the darkness that we are in now. In fact, it's hard enough to see that we're above the surface. We had jumped, and all we know is we had left the safety of the light. This uh, game can quickly turn into a horror game in uh, IVA mode. When you're the astronaut, when you're the one far away from everybody else, floating on a rock 2.3 kilometers away from your goal, which seems a little strange. Uh, I thought we landed a lot closer to our target. We plan to anyways, but nonetheless, we go ahead and jump into the well, minimal atmosphere that it has and uh, work our way over. So I'm going to bring the altitude and the nav ball up a little bit bigger. Uh, on the bottom left there, so you can kind of keep an eye on, even though we are floating through darkness, you can keep an eye on uh, just how high I am, just how fast I'm going, and uh, whether or not I'm going to be falling, which is having that yellow circle, that trajectory as it's going into the orange, that means I'm going to be head down, and once it goes into the blue, that means I'm on an upwards trajectory, so... This is uh, all I had to go by as I floated uh, using my RCS pack. I'm going about 20 meters per second, which is uh, potentially deadly. Uh, so if I were to hit the surface, Jebediah may cease to be. And uh, we just can't have that. We can't kill Jebediah uh, in this series or any series. We gotta keep this guy safe. We did, however, remember to bring the most uh, fanciest suit, the one that actually glows in the dark, which uh, makes things a little bit easier. I'm going to go into EVA view, uh, third person view, just because, uh, you know, we have this nice suit. Let's, uh, let's take the second to appreciate it. And uh, we don't need to limit ourselves to IVA. This isn't POV. We can, uh, we can be in third person. If you notice, I'm now at 262 meters and falling very high, um, uncomfortably high at this because, again, even though I'm falling fairly slowly, there's a chance that I can hit the surface a little too hard, spaghettify, and die. So, gotta be careful. Using our RCS to position ourselves towards our target. Tried to bring up the landing info to see if it would give me a suicide burn countdown, but unfortunately it would not come up because, probably because I'm just little Kerbal. And we tried our best to kill our forward thrust, uh, and we did. That's why our uh, nav ball was kind of freaking out there. But of course, we still needed forward thrust to reach our target. But we are getting very close, so it's uh, going to be very important to keep an eye on our speed. And we are dropping very rapidly, 200 meters and falling. Jebediah is so excited to see his friends. Uh, he's a little more excited about those snacks. It's been a long trip, and he's quite excited about the bed, but he's very excited to play some space poker with, uh, with Bob and uh, all the new recruits. I forget their names, but uh, surely he will. So now we are dropping down below 80 meters. We are coming back down to the surface fairly fast. We are at 12 meter, or 11 meters per second. Uh, but we're going to kind of slow that down as we get closer. And the target has disappeared. So now uh, he's close enough that he can't even see how close he is on the HUD. He's now low enough that he can see the ground, and he's close enough to realize that he had selected the wrong target, 
and this is actually the landing module from the rover that was discarded a few episodes ago in the last episode I think actually uh, and he had traveled 2.3 kilometers in the wrong direction because we actually had landed uh, close to the rover <laughs> he had flown quite far and as we see here actually uphill which is uh, surprising because at any given time he could have slammed into the surface so that was a lot more dangerous than he even knew but uh, unfortunately that is where today's episode is going to end in the next episode we're going to get him to the rover we're going to do some roving and we're going to do a lot more fun things on in this but anyways thank you so much for watching i hope you enjoyed it i hope you're looking forward for more kxp if you did please consider subscribing drop me a like let me know your thoughts and i will see y'all in the next one take care